Greetings, this is for Tesla Fan Insight. This is actually a redo of Model 3 ramp uh, discussion along with our discussion of Lamborghini's uh, suggestion that Tesla's committing fraud. Uh, as you can see behind me, I have video of the truck because the third thing I wanted to cover today is the fact that Daimler is having some battery degradation problems, so we're going to cover that as well as part of this show. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're a repeat visitor, um, we also could use some help on Patreon if possible. Our link is below. Today's talk uh, sort of has sort of three zones. The first zone that I'd like to cover today is the fact that uh, contrary to many haters' beliefs, Tesla is actually successfully going to meet the numbers when it comes to Model 3 production at the 5,000 unit uh, by the end of the month. As we discussed in our previous video, this is being accomplished by the fact that they actually have um, put up a tent behind the factory that allows them to add the capacity necessary to get to this 5,000 number. The tent can be there for as long as a year, but I think it, it'll take about six months for them to build out an actual building to house this facility, which I think would obviously be more efficient. The, um, <clears throat> I think this is exciting news because um, I had a chance to meet with uh, some executives from Silicon Valley one of whom suggested to me that there's a huge problem uh, in terms of why he was not buying a Tesla. And that problem was that there was some concern in, on his part that Tesla might go bankrupt and he didn't want to sorry, buy a car where the company is actually headed into, into bankruptcy. I thought this was interesting because I didn't think bankruptcy was a real possibility for the company, but based on their bond yields and other factors, uh, it turns out this is a legitimate concern that is not, has, is, is not and was not out of the question. With the stock price below 200 and heading south, uh, the bonds were suggesting that Tesla couldn't raise any more money and that a restructuring was the only way they would get capital if needed. So now as we close in on that 5,000, I really think that Elon is pushing to get that number into the 5,500 to 6,000 unit range. Um, the haters sort of are saying that the 5,000 is a no-brainer, especially with the tent. And they're also saying that the bigger issue now is, are those 5,000 units that are being produced something that he's pushed for to get to the end of the month in June at? After this period, we'll see um, then perhaps pull back to the 3,500 range that they've been producing at. And I don't think this is the case. I think uh, Elon will establish the 5,000 and hunt for between six and 7,000 units a week. And this will enable a lot of folks who are on the waiting list to start getting their vehicles and, you know, start eyeing uh, getting through that waiting list around the world and heading towards, um, you know, a nice block of cars each year that are being produced once all of these production snafus are worked out. The next thing I wanted to, so the bottom line is that I wanted to make sure I got this video out now because in the next few days, the theory is the first couple of days of July, we'll know what the production numbers are. And this is significantly gonna impact the stock because if they can sustain at 5,000 units, um, that's a huge amount of cash that's coming in on a weekly basis and um, you know, the suggestions of bankruptcy are over, even if they're not necessarily yet at the profitability run that they want to do. So kudos to all involved with Tesla for getting uh, to this point and uh, kudos to Elon for giving up everything uh, to focus on, you know, the mission objective that he has on the table right now. The uh, sort of clean up other items that go with this is the fact that um, as Elon has suggested, there's a large number of folks who don't want the company to succeed. And certainly there are outsiders in that position. I would almost suggest that um, Elon is a, a really good engineer. 
and he really enjoys tinkering with things. So hopefully he's not introducing new features to the Model 3 that make it harder for it to uh, be able to get outside the door. One other cleanup item that I wanted to do before we jumped into the Lamborghini conversation is the fact that for those of you who are heading towards Model 3s, I think you're going to find the car pretty stable in terms of repair issues, etc. Another sort of out of the Silicon Valley analysis that's popped up is a number of people have talked about problems with the door handles, particularly if you're at or near exiting warranty. Uh, there's been some consistent issues with uh, the door handles not presenting, and it's a little hard to get in and drive your car if the doors don't open. You know, if you do have the features. Um, of uh, presentation, you could also have the car pull up to you and have the door pop open that way, but that's a backup method that I would use. Um, hopefully we can convince Elon and company to switch the door handles to what's being done with the Model 3 so that, um, you know, the need to deal with uh, those door handle issues can disappear. We can move on from that subject because it's turned out to be a pretty expensive one going forward. The um, Next thing I wanted to sort of move into is the suggestion made by the CEO of Lamborghini that Tesla is en engaged in fraud when it comes to uh, the current um, uh, Roadster and the performance specs that he's put out there. I think this is fascinating because um, I really enjoy Lamborghini's cars. They're beautiful, they're fast, and definitely enjoyable. I think it's unfortunate that he's uh, chosen to go the fraud route and I thought it was interesting how similar those comments are relative to the Roadster that are being made about the truck. What's fascinating to me is that if you look at the video of the Roadster in action, uh, based on the distances being covered, I think you can um, put a stopwatch to see whether or not the car actually can meet the performance specs described for all those folks during the intro that were able to drive the vehicle. So. I think that bottom line, um, the response from many of the competitors without competing vehicles that work has been to sort of cast aspersions at Tesla of its non-viability and the battery ability to not there to get this done. Now, speaking of battery abilities, uh, I believe that uh, the head of Lamborghini may have a point about current iteration of batteries unable to deliver the performance that Tesla has described. And this is what's interesting is that Tesla's not handing its battery out to anybody for sale, et cetera, et cetera, unless you buy a vehicle. So uh, in terms of what Lamborghini could buy to compete with Tesla, there isn't anything on the market currently. So hence, one could argue that he's right, that Tesla's uh, solution is non-viable because he can't get any. But uh, I believe that it's a, it's a game changer car and a game changer battery. And I do not think it's the same uh, cells that are being used in a Model 3 currently. I think it's a more advanced cell. And um, we're all looking forward to when this thing comes out at the end of uh, 2019 or beginning of 2020, because it is a game changer vehicle and a supercar that really messes things up. Now, this, the next thing about the Lamborghinis that I think is really fascinating is that um, Tesla has created a nightmare for Lamborghini, as well as for the, the Chiron and other supercars. And the nightmare is, why does somebody spend $2.3 million for a Chiron when you can get a Tesla for 250 k that'll blow the doors off of it? And so experiencing that kind of performance, I think, really uh, puts competitors like Lamborghini, Audi, all the other big car companies at a disadvantage, and it really forces them to move towards electric. As you all probably know, Lamborghini had actually indicated that they would not go electric, but they've now started to switch up. What I don't understand in the case of Lamborghini and some of the other manufacturers is what's going to happen when all of the um, sort of say VW Audi vehicles are using the same battery technology. So how are they going to differentiate the cars if the same battery technology is delivering about the same performance? So we'll all be stay tuned to find out what this is. The thumbnail I'm choosing to use on this 
is um, an electric uh, uh, Lamborghini concept car that I think looked really cool and I think um, it's worth looking up and uh, you know I think it's fascinating. I also think it's fascinating that uh, the CEO of Lamborghini has pursued this line of logic because there is uh, there are cars under the VW brand like uh, the e-tron as well as um, the, the, uh, the new uh, Porsche that's electric that are going to turn in some pretty good performance numbers and Lamborghini will likely have access to these batteries as well. So we'll see you know, whether or not they're claiming uh, fraud after they're able to deliver it. The final thing I wanted to cover today is what I call challenges in the electric world relative to battery mm -hmm. degradation. So um, what's fascinating to me is that there's a problem right now that is being had by Daimler-Benz, which is um, they're having a an issue where usually after three years of ownership of a truck, the vehicle will then go into a secondary market for sale. The problem is when you have a number of trucks that only go 100 miles, the battery packs are being beaten to death because they're using uh, all of the battery pack up and down in terms of uh, usage. And that heavy 100% use of the battery on a constant basis for multiple years results in batteries that are, um, that are, that are useless at the end of that time because they've been beat um, rather badly. As all of you know who are Tesla owners, it's recommended that by Tesla that you go no more than 90% on a regular basis and no less than 20% in terms of the range. This allows cells to rest or alternate uh, over time. So I believe that there's a, um, a nice situation here for Tesla with all the extended range it has. Users can keep the vehicle in an ideal operating zone for the batteries without overuse and therefore look to get unlimited cycles. In the case of the Daimler truck, because of beating up the battery after three years, we're now in a situation where you have um, uh, three years usage and now you have a truck that needs a brand new battery and you might as well get a new truck instead of the new battery. So there's no real residual value in the used market for something that started out with 100 miles of range and is down to 20 or 30 uh, at the end of three years. So I think it creates, you know, the Tesla product and truck, et cetera, creates some severe problems in terms of how Daimler moves into the electric future efficiently, given the fact that they do not have the battery capabilities that Tesla has. So, you know, I, I uh, typically, go through sort of the areas that I wanted to cover and then do a few cleanup items. Uh, the first of which is, I believe that if we do have above 5,000 a week production going on at Tesla, this actually solidifies the, the bull case for the stock. And that bull case, in fact, uh, is really bad news for the shorts. So it's my belief then that we're going to have a situation coming up where Tesla uh, stock price could jump as much as 20% in a couple of days, but I think it, after it has its blowout, wipe out some shorts, um, it's going to sort of settle back down into the just below 400 range until we have more significant news. Uh, uh, unfortunate for the shorts, but very good for Tesla. Um, the next thing I wanted to sort of uh, cover is the fact that um, we also have our, our Tesla Fan Insight um, on, uh, we will soon have it on Instagram, but we are over on Facebook. Um, I mention this because um, we've now started post posting weekly images that you will not see uh, on this page, but that enable you to get a better look at what's going on at Tesla. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, I definitely want to thank you all for taking time out to join us uh, on Tesla Fan Insight. Look forward to any and all comments. Sorry about our first round being in bad shape here. Um, definitely would like to get your input on all the above and the news of, of production. Thanks and have a good day. 
Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, could you help on Patreon if you would? Tschüss, mach's gut. Au revoir, la hitra haut, choda hafez. Enough respect. And thanks for joining us once again. Uh, La Rosa Lewis, thanks for joining us. And thank you for the comment. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of days.